Oh man, in this video, I'm gonna share with you three key macroeconomic catalysts which could set the tone for Bitcoin over the coming weeks. As you can see here on the charts, guys, Bitcoin is in a bearish continuation pattern. We need to monitor this. Most likely, these fall to the downside, but we have seen a strong move today. 1.6% up today. The pre-market on the US equities are up today in anticipation of the much-anticipated free catalyst we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at Q2 revised GDP. We're going to be looking at core uh, sorry, PCE inflation, which is really important. And then we're going to be looking at the Fed rate monitor tool because Jerome Powell will be speaking as well. But first, let's take a look at the Bitcoin price. And you can see we are in this bearish continuation pattern, right? You have a big extended move to the downside. You consolidate. This is a textbook bear flag, right? You expect this to break to the downside more often than not and start falling towards your price target down past 20,000. But we are seeing some good strength here. And I'm going to show with you a few reasons why maybe it's not quite straightforward and why I'm a little bit stuck here. And I think the market's stuck as well, because the reality is the technical analysis can only take you so far. And right now, the technical analysis is saying, okay, we could fall to the downside, but I'm going to show you a few reasons why it could flip and go to the upside. And it's all going to depend on these three catalysts, which we're going to break through one by one in this video. Now, Fear and greed index is sitting at 25, okay? We are now back in extreme fear. The market's fearful. Just literally about 10 days ago or so, we were at 45. The market was frothy. Tourists were coming back in. We could feel that, right? People were getting a little bit hyped. They were getting excited for a move back to all-time highs. So many people were calling for a move to all-time highs. That was never in play, guys. The bears were in complete control, and, and the maximum we were going to get on a trade was a trade up to that 28, 30K mark, which the bears didn't even give us that, right? So the bears were in very very strong control at this point. Now, if we look at the pre-market, you can see indeed that the pre-market is showing us um, a little bit of green this morning. Okay, so we've got the Dow Jones notching up 0.2, S&P about half a percent, and the Nasdaq up about half a percent here in the pre-market as well. So that's something to watch out for. But again, the critical thing is going to be the data we receive. And the first piece of data we're going to receive today is our gross domestic product Q2 GDP revision. Okay, this comes out at about 8:30 uh, Eastern time. Now, what we need to watch for is remember, Q1 showed us minus 1.6, and this rev was revised a few times. In Q2, the preliminary reading gave us minus 0.9. That put us in an official recession, right? So we're in a recession based on the definition of two consecutive negative quarters of GDP growth. Now, obviously, Jerome, um, you know, Biden and Jerome Powell came out to try playing around with the definitions to, to avoid the fact that we're in a recession. They said, no, but we've got a really strong labor market. So technically, we're not in a recession. But look, we're in a recession. So the question now is when that figure comes out today, when they revise it, which is very normal, they always revise these figures as they get more and more accurate data. Could they muddle it and try to show that this turns positive or really, really flat, like 0 0.03, right, or 0 0.02, just to try to suppress the panic in the markets that we're in a deep recession? That's one thing I'm looking out for. Now, the other thing which would make markets fall is if they try, if this comes out more negative, if this comes out minus one, minus 1.2, minus 1.3, then the markets really could lose its bottom and panic and start playing out the bearish scenario. It's a really important figure, which a lot of people aren't talking about today. They're overlooking this to talk about Jerome Powell, which we're going to come on to as well, but really, really important catalyst we need to be aware of. Next up, tomorrow, we're going to get the PCE data. Really, really important piece of data. And you've got to see that the year-on-year -year figures currently sits at 6.8%, the last reading, okay? Now we're going to get our July reading, and the economists are expecting that to come in at 62 Okay, in other words, if I show you this on a line chart, we expect this to notch down a bit. Okay, again, if this goes high or if this remains at this elevated level, markets could panic because that could mean Jerome Powell can continue to be hawkish. So just how we saw CPI data come down, we need to see this come down. Now, really, really important, which a lot of people are overlooking is we need to remember that inflation data by definition is a lag measure. I mean, the data we're getting tomorrow is data from, uh, this is July's reading, right? So it doesn't take into account the 25 days of trading we've had in August where we can see how things are changing. We've seen oil prices start to notch back up again due to some of the uh, output being restricted by Saudi and OPEC, right? So we know there are some other challenges which may not come into the August reading. And remember that other reading is also gonna, that other reading will play a part before the next Fed meeting as well because that comes out, the next CPI reading comes out on the 21st uh, before, uh, yeah, before Jerome Powell speaks, let's find out when Jerome Powell speaks. Twenty first, sorry. So the so the CPI data comes eight days before that, so it's thirteenth. Okay, so September the thirteenth, 
you will get your next CPI data, then Jerome Powell speaks on 21st. Now, why is this important? Well, what you can see here is the market's pricing in, if I just show you here, the market is pricing in, 55% of the market is priced in a 75 basis point rate hike now, okay? This is changing a lot. So tomorrow when Jerome Powell speaks, we need to watch how does this move? Because if Jerome Powell comes out dovish, markets are going to like it. If he comes out hawkish, markets will not like it. So if he comes out saying, yep, yeah, we've got much more to do, no signs of pausing, we've got to crack on with what we're doing and keep raising interest rates expeditiously, or if he says something like that, then we will see this continue to notch up. If he comes out and says, yep, a lot of the work's been done, financial conditions are tightening, or he starts saying that the labor market's weakening, or you know things like that, where he comes across dovish, then we can see more people start to price in 50 basis points instead of the 75 basis points, and that could mean a rally in the market. It's really, really important. That's what we need to look out for. So Jerome Powell tomorrow, after the PCE data, three key macroeconomic catalysts. Now, sitting here on Bitcoin, what are we seeing? I shared yeah, I've been sharing over the last few days that this has been extremely range bound, right? And if any of you guys are experienced traders, you guys can use my links in the description to buy bit or bit get, get yourself set up, take those bonuses, and you can trade these ranges all day, right? I mean, if I had spare time, I would just be trading these ranges in here. And that's a really good way to not only practice trading, but get yourself used to a simple trade from bottom to the top of a channel, right? These are hugely predictable. When you get a bounce from here, you trade it to the top on a short term time frame, you exit before here, and then people will short it to the top. You know, it's just range bound. Now, the other way is to wait for a breakout, right? Like a nice clean breakout from here to see which direction we're heading in. Now, as you can see, we look like we're getting a bit of rejection here on the hourly, as you would expect from the top of the channel. So now we need to see, do we get this or are we going to try breakout? Now, a few things here on the four hourly. If I show you on the four hourly, this is the interesting bit. If I bring out the VPVR, what you will notice here on the VPVR is there's quite less volume. In, there's, a, there's a void here. Right? So if Bitcoin can clear this level, we could see a nice little move up to where the resistance will come in at around 23,000. Now, that's not guaranteed, but that could be a nice cheeky little move here. And it would depend on if we get some positive data and if the markets want to feel risk on for a little bit. Now, overall, if I put out the EMA ribbon, you can still see we're in a downtrend. Okay, So we don't want to get overconfident here. If you're taking any of these trades, you need to understand that you are doing so against the trend. And the trend is that the bears are in control. We're consolidating into our EMA ribbon. Okay, When you consolidate into your EMA ribbon, the most likely situation is you get rejected to the downside because we are in a downward trend. So we need to watch out for that. But the bull case is, can we push through the CMA ribbon? Can we get above 22,000 again and try to hold above it? That'd be a key level for Bitcoin to recoup here. And I think it will need the macro economy to help it. It's going to need a good GDP revision. It's going to need good PCE data and good news from Jerome Powell tomorrow to aid that angle. Now, another thing we have to look at in terms of this is the dollar index. I've been mentioning this as a key driver recently, and this is what the markets are going to be looking towards. And as you can see, what we're seeing here on the daily chart is dollar index has over the little over the last couple of days here been getting a little bit of rejection. OK, so we're seeing a little bit of rejection here off this double top pattern over the last two days. We had a strong day yesterday, followed by a wick down. And today's been a much weaker day. Now, this happens when markets are feeling risk on. So for whatever reason today, markets have been feeling a little bit risk on so far. We saw that with the pre-market data. We've got a little bit of green in the market. We can see Bitcoin moving up a percent and a half and Dixie is falling to the downside. So we need to keep an eye on this. If, if dollar index wants to come down and get a retest, Bitcoin can benefit from that. We could see a nice little rally, which matches what I was showing you on the technicals but if we get bad news this little this little calling off could be ended quickly we could do something like that and just go post all time uh, new highs okay so all lines on the dixie remember this moves when people are fearful when people are fearful they flock to the dollar okay so if you get a bad gdp reading if you get a hawkish jerome powell people flock to the dollar in those moments and then risk falls off dollar index goes up equities tend to fall and Bitcoin will follow suit and fall to the downside as well. Okay, so really important that we watch for that. The good news is, is if we can get some good news in the economic data, we're set up nicely for the dollar index to come down. And if it does come down, you would then form a nice double top pattern, which could signal an even bigger fall on the Dixie. But we're still a few steps away from that. So that's what we're looking out for here on the dollar index. Loads going on in the macro economy. If you guys are trading then be very very careful these are very volatile times great for the movement of bitcoin right you get some good percentage moves if you're an experienced trader but in terms of your long-term portfolio if you guys aren't trading and you're just trying to huddle your long-term portfolio hold your conviction don't panic if i see some red in the market because there's some overreaction i will nibble and buy some more right if we see a bit bitcoin fall below that twenty thousand level i'm more than happy to take out my uh wallet and buy some more 
if we see a rally, I'm not going to be chasing those green candles. I'm going to be sitting back and seeing what can we get from there. Maybe I'll take a short-term trade, but in terms of my long-term position, I won't be chasing green candles to try getting to the market. I'm happy with my position. I have been happy with my position. If we get lower prices, which I can't refuse, I will top some up, but otherwise I'm sitting pretty right now. If you guys are panicked right now, you need to ask yourself, what is going on? What is the lack of conviction that's making you so nervous in this market? If you guys keep taking losing trades, you need to look yourself in the mirror and say, am I a trader? Am I following the rules? Am I putting stop loss? Am I putting take profits? Am I taking responsibility? Am I doing my research? Am I doing what it takes to be a good trader? If you're not and you're just gambling, then please understand that you are just gambling and take that responsibility on your own shoulders. Guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, check out the links in the description if you want to trade any of these moves with me on Bybit or BitGet. They are offering some amazing bonuses and those links do support the channel. So if you appreciate this type of content and you want to support and you're going to trade anyway, please do check out those links in the description as well. Go watch this video here and I'll see you in the next one.